Welcome to Tooth Bond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a reading roundup. In my reading roundup videos, I just tell you about the books that I have been reading recently and I've got a good stack in front of me. But before we get to that, I need to show you that I, because I won a Goodreads giveaway. I was so excited. This showed up in the mail. I had no idea what was going on. There was no note in the parcel at all. There was just, it said that it was an advanced uncorrected proof. Um, and so then I thought, well, maybe it's Goodreads and I've won a giveaway and I didn't know. So I went and I checked and yes. So I, I won Kate Morton's newest book, Homecoming, from a Goodreads giveaway. And I'm very excited about it. This is going on sale April 4th of this year. And so I'm very excited that uh, I got an advanced copy of it. Um, it is set in Australia uh, in two time periods, uh, 1959 and, um, and 60 years later. And I've enjoyed the Kate Martin that I've read um, previously. So yeah, I was really, really excited about that. So watch for a review of that coming up soon. So what books have I been reading recently? I read The Water Room by Christopher Fowler. This is book two in the Peculiar Crimes Unit series. I'm doing a reread of this series, um, mostly because I've read the series completely out of order, which means I don't think that I've read all of them. So I decided to go back to the very beginning and read them in order just to make sure that I have read all of them. So The Water Room is the second one in the series. And I just, this is a series that I just love so much. Um, this mystery was fascinating because a, an older woman was found drowned in her basement. She was sitting in a chair in the basement that was completely dry and yet she had drowned. So it was quite the conundrum for the Peculiar Crimes Unit and I, I really did enjoy this. This one was a reread for me. I, I had read it before. And um, there was one thing that I marked that I wanted to talk about. This description of both Arthur Bryant and John May, who are the, the lead detectives on this team, I thought was just brilliant. Tortoise-like, scarf-wrapped, argumentative to the point of rudeness, myopic and decrepit, Bryant appeared even more disheveled than usual owing to the current upheavals in his life. A waft of white hair rose above a ho in a horseshoe above his ears, as if he'd been touching static globes at the science museum. Behind his watery sapphire eyes, though, was a spirit as robust and spiky as winter earth. He had been described as independent to the point of vexation and individual to the level of eccentricity, which seemed accurate enough. John May, his dapper partner, was younger by three years, an attractive senior of considerable charisma, modern in outlook and gregarious by nature. Bryant was a loner, literate and secretive, with a sidelong crafty mind that operated in opposition to May's level-headed thinking. Bryant and May are one of my favorite detective duos ever. I love them and I love this series and so I'm super excited to be doing this reread. So yeah, The Water Room, I really did enjoy it. I also read Miss Seaton Draws the Line by Heron Carvick. This is the second in the Miss Seaton series and I really enjoyed this one as well, although not quite as much as the first one, um, but I think that that was because of the subject matter. These are still, I would still call them cozies but the subject matter in this one was a little harder to take um, because there have been um, some child murders and that is always a, a, really, a really tough subject. Um, but Miss Seaton gets involved because um, she is asked by the police to come and draw um, a corpse that they have not yet identified. They want her to draw it so they can get the picture out. And then in classic Miss Seaton form, uh, things from that have been like, you know, wafting around in her brain come out on the paper and end up giving the police clues uh, to help them with the case. I love Miss Seaton. She's like, a, 
She's the classic unexpected sleuth. She doesn't ever intend to get involved. She just does. And she's so fantastic. So she is a retired art teacher. And I love that as well. It's a slightly different take on the um, amateur sleuth. And so, yeah, Miss Seaton Draws the Line was, was very entertaining. And it's, this is from 1969. And then I did a buddy read with Marilyn from Marilyn Maya Mendoza and we read Pilgrim's Rest by Patricia Wentworth. This was fantastic. I loved this book and I loved talking about it with Marilyn. Um, it's all set around a house called Pilgrim's Rest and the Pilgrim family have lived there for years. But there has been a series of possible accidents that have put Roger's life in danger. He is the, the heir or the current owner um, of Pilgrim's Rest. And so um, Detective Sergeant Frank Abbott um, is talking about it with Miss Silver, um, who is a retired governess. And so she heads down there to see if she can figure out what uh, what is happening at Pilgrim's Rest. And um, I just really enjoyed this. This was from 1946, and I loved all of the stuff about World War II that we got in here. There are evacuees in the village, and um, one of the characters, Judy Elliott, um, she gets a job at Pilgrim's Rest, um, and she talks about how she is exempt from being called up because she has to take care of her sister's child. Her sister and her sister's husband were killed in a bomb, a bombing raid. And so she has to take care of this child that makes her exempt from being called up. And yeah, so there was just all these really fascinating World War II tidbits in here. Um, but the story itself was fantastic. And Miss Silver was in the whole thing. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I'm also continuing my reread of Karen Slaughter's books. Um, we are now into the Will Trent series. The two series have combined the Grant County and the Will Trent series, and this is Broken. And this one was this one was very good. Uh, Will Trent is called to go to Grant County, a prisoner who had been arrested for the murder of a girl in the town was found dead in the cells. And so Will Trent, as an officer of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, is sent in to investigate what's going on. And so it was just this great combination of the two series. Um, so you get characters that you know from the first series. Um, and so you kind of got this worlds colliding kind of thing. And um, yeah, it was it was really good. I also did a buddy read with Carolyn um, from uh, Carolyn's Reading Ramblings. We are reading the Whitstable Pearl series by Julie Wassmer, and this is number three, May Day Murders. These are set in Whitstable in England, and the main character is Pearl Nolan. She owns a seafood restaurant, and she also runs a private detective agency. And um, yeah, so this is great. Uh, this one was really good. It was set in the springtime. They're getting ready for some May Day festivals and um, an actress that they have asked to come and um, open the festivities at Whistable Castle, she is found murdered. So this one was great fun to talk about with, with Carolyn as we were reading it. We, we were both sharing our our theories about what was going on and who was suspicious and and uh, yeah so it was it was a lot of fun to read with her and this was and this was an enjoyable mystery however the ending of this one was slightly unsatisfying I feel like the author lost her courage to give it the ending that it should have had um, the person that she had revealed as the killer and their motive just wasn't strong enough. There were other characters whose motive was definitely stronger and it would have made more sense if they had done it. But I, I think that the author liked them 
and and didn't want to do that so yeah I wasn't a huge fan of the ending and I wasn't a huge fan of the position that Pearl was put in at the end either so I did really enjoy this story however I did not like the end and I think that the author could have done it better um, and then when I was in the library getting broken by Karen Slaughter, I found this, Cleaning the Gold, by Karen Slaughter and Lee Child. It's a Jack Reacher and Will Trent short story. Now, the length of it, I was thinking, oh, this looks like it's more of a novella, but it's really not. It really is just a short story um, because it also includes snippets from from Karen Slaughter's new newest book and from... Uh, Lee Child's newest book. So this is the story and this is from their books. So it really is just a short story. Um, it was fun to put Jack Reacher and Will Trent together. However, it was too short of a short story. I, I found it just a little bit unsatisfying. I wanted more from the story. A novella instead of a short story I think would have been much better. But I did enjoy seeing the two of them <laughs> interacting with each other. My January pick from the vault was The Golden Crucible by Jean Stubbs. And I'm only mentioning it here because I had a whole video about how about choosing this book. Um, but I did end up DNFing this book, which was unfortunate because it's set in the Edwardian times in 1906. So that's a time period I really enjoy. But I just knew that this wasn't the book for me. I was just yeah it wasn't it wasn't gonna work for me so I ended up DNFing this one and it is but it is leaving the vault um, and, and I'm going to give it away so it's leaving my house so um, the purpose of the vault is to actually read these books and uh, do something with them so in that sense it was a success um, I have joined the um, the Regina Irregulars, which is a group that meets to discuss Sherlock Holmes stories, which is very, very fun. We meet once a month. And this month we met to discuss Silver Blaze from Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. Um, so I have not read this whole thing. I just read Silver Blaze. And next up we are going to be reading The Cardboard Box. Um, so, but I did want to mention, because I did read that short story, and it was just really, really great discussing it with a whole group of people. And then last but not least, I read Murder at the Serpentine Bridge by Andrea Penrose. This is the newest in the Rexford and Sloan series. This is a historical mystery series set in the Regency time period. Um, and I really enjoy this series. It is very well written. The characters are great and the storylines are always fascinating. This one is set during the peace celebrations that happen in London to honor the victory over Napoleon. The peace conference, which is, which is really famous. I think a lot of historians that, you know, or people know about the peace conference that happened in Vienna, but that happens a little bit later in London. Um, and this is historical. Um, leaders from certain countries around the world did meet in in London for some peace celebrations and that is the backdrop for this mystery. Um, a scientist is found murdered um, at the Serpentine Bridge and um, and the case the case goes from there and I just loved all the historical bits in here. Uh, that's kind of the, the one of the big reasons why I love reading historical mysteries is to kind of dive into some of these really fascinating historical time periods and events that happen that may not get a lot of attention. For example, I didn't know about this peace celebration in London. So that was really, really interesting. And I really did enjoy um, this book in the series. I don't want to say too much because it's, you know, five or six into the series now. And so... Yeah, it's the sixth one in the series. So I don't want to give any spoilers, but I did really, really enjoy this one. So there you have it. That is what I have been reading recently. Have you read any of these books? Let's talk about them in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.